Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. Light the candle, Tiger! Hello and welcome to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. I'm Jack McCarran, stepping in for Bruce Millington, who's away on his holidays this week, and I'm joined in studio by Joe Champion of the Racing Post and on the line by Ian McLaughlin from Paddy Power. On today's show, we'll reflect on wins for Matt Wallace and Bryson DeChambeau last weekend and ask what that means for the Ryder Cup picture. We'll also preview the BMW Championship and the Omega European Masters, as well as answering some of your questions. But first of all, Joe, there's a bit of a challenge tour feel to today's lineup with me sitting in Bruce's chair <laughs> and you alongside me. But are you confident you can uh, step up in the absence of Mr. Steve Palmer? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm not quite the form horse that Steve is, but I'll give it a go. Well, luckily, Joe is an absolute judge on the golf, so he's a worthy replacement. And of course, Ian is with us after his cracking tipping performance last week. Ian, did you back Matt Wallace as well as tipping him? I did, I did back him. Uh, dialed back the stakes a bit after a quiet few weeks, but it was nice to get a winner, especially 33 to 1 with Wallace. So I think he birdied seven in his last nine holes if you include the playoffs. So he came from, came in a wet sail to get it done, thankfully. Good stuff. And Matt Wallace was also tipped at 35 to 1 by RFO golf expert Jeremy Chapman. So don't forget, you can read his thoughts on the golf in the racing and football outlook every single Tuesday. But now, despite his win in Denmark, Matt Wallace has missed out on a wildcard pick for the Ryder Cup. Captain Thomas Bjorn has just announced his four wildcards and they are Paul Casey, Sergio Garcia, Ian Poulter and Henrik Stenson. Joe, first of all, do you think anyone was particularly hard done by, by Thomas Bjorn? Um, no, not really. I mean, I think possibly Garcia was the one that everyone was talking about. Should he, shouldn't he go? Um, he's an experienced campaigner for Europe, of course, um, but his form's been dreadful. Um, people that are hard done by, you could argue Matt Wallace, you know, he's won three times this year. But you know, I don't. You know, he's won low-grade events, and um, he's failed to back it up when he has won as well. I think if he'd contended every week, then he'd have been in with a much greater shout. Ian, um, what about yourself then? Are you uh, happy with the four picks, or do you think someone's been hard done by? Uh, I think they were expected. I think we mentioned last week that Bjorn was going to go with experience with five rookies already on the, the eight that qualified. Obviously, as Joe said, Garcia would have been the one where he would he or won't he? And I think. I agree with Joe with Matt Wallace, but I would say more Rafael Cabrera Bayo would have felt a bit hard done by. Like he went two two wins, one draw last uh, last time in Hazeltine, playing in great form. Obviously, he challenged for the lead for a long time in Boston last week. So I think I think the coin flip was between him and Sergio for the last pick. So obviously, if if one player is to feel hard done by, I thought it would be Rafa. And uh, over in the US, Bryson DeChambeau won his second straight FedEx Cup event with a final round 67 at TPC Boston last week. He has been named in Jim Furyk's Ryder Cup team alongside Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods. Joe, much to say, much to be expected from the US team? Uh, very much so. There's no way you could leave out Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. Um, and uh, yeah, DeChambeau superb in the last couple of weeks. He's been great all season really, but he's really got it together now. Um, yeah, almost impossible to leave him out. So the main question is who's going to get the fourth pick, of course. Um, Ian, Bryson DeChambeau, he's been in cracking form of late, obviously winning the uh, last two tournaments. Do you see him as a potential future multi-major winner? I do, I do indeed. Yeah, I think he's starting to really settle himself into the tour. Like There's obviously a, bit, a lot of rigmarole about him when he first came to the tour as the mad scientist, all these new... Uh, all the clubs the same length sort of way there was a bit of uh, fanfare about him now he's starting to settle in and obviously he's showing how good he is and I think there's a lot more left in the tank in terms of potential and I would say like there's quotes of 51 for the Masters next April and I think it's a course that I think he top 25 as an amateur there two years ago so I think it's a course that's really going to suit him and by the time we come around to April he could be top three in the world so I think 51 is probably a good value bet next year for the Masters. And if he continues to win these big tournaments, and for example, if he does go on to win a Masters or perform well in uh, the Ryder Cup, could you see more maybe amateur golfers adopting his approach to the game, or is he just a complete one-off? I don't think it's a complete one-off. Listen to the broadcast on Sky on Monday night. Claude Harmon, who's coached to Dustin Johnson and Bruce Kepp, actually mentioned that he's now using single-length clubs. Uh, he said he had his bad problems with his back, and he seems to find that these sort of seven iron every club length seems to help his game. So I think the more the shamble comes into the fore and the more that gets talked about and how beneficial it is to amateurs, I think we'll see it a lot more, for sure. So he could be the new Fobs reflop. Um, <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, we'll watch this space. Anyway, before we move on to the weekend's action, as always, we'll pick up some listen, uh, qu listeners' questions. 
And first of all, Andrew Wilshere, a uh, Racing Post colleague of myself and Joe, he asks, Bo Hostler has the game to be a contender and looks a star for the future. But after a recent last day disasters, has he got the bottle to win a PGA Tour event? Joe, I'll throw that one to you first. Um, yeah, I'm sure he has, but it's going to take time. You've got to remember that he's, Andrew's described him there as such a talent, and he is. He's a brilliant young player, but you know, it takes time for these players. You know, we've just talked about Bryson DeChambeau getting settled into the tour. And Hostler's only been on tour for a year or so. So it, <clears throat> sorry, it's, uh, it's difficult to get settled in and um, he's got him winning positions, but he is only a young lad and you know, it's not easy to close out. Some people have got, you know, they've got the balls to close it out straight away, but not all of them have that and it may take some time, but he'll keep knocking on the door and eventually he'll get over the line because he is that good. Ian, over to you, Bo Hostler. Yeah, I'd agree. Like, he's only 23 years of age, so to be tagging him a, a bottler is probably a little bit harsh at the moment. You look like he's kind of in the same mould of a, a Jordan Speed. When he first came on the tour for the first year, 18 months, he put himself in positions to win tournaments and then kind of just didn't close the deal and was starting to be tagged as somewhat of can he finish here. And then we all know what he did the next year, 2015, with two major wins, a FedEx Cup victory, six wins in the season. So these type of players coming, especially from the web.com tour, I think it's, with it being so deep with the fields at the moment and the talent being there, I think it might take a year to 18 months for players to really delve into the turn into the sorry into the season properly and I think Hostler's one of those who could win multiple times in the next five to ten years. Good stuff lads. Uh, next question then comes from Deck Pilling. He asks how many majors can Rory get to? It's been a long time since he's won one. Is it only a matter of time before he wins again? Ian, I'll come to you first with that one. Yeah, uh, looking through, as always, look through like kind of the next major venues for the next three or four years with players. And looking through Rory's, he's coming obviously to Port Rush for the Open next year. He seems to be getting the grips to it, Augusta, so that'd be one he can kind of probably get a green jacket there. He's coming to TPC Harding Park for a PGA Championship where he's won the Dell match play before. He's going back to Kiowa Island for another PGA Championship. I think he, Roy's type of player these days where he just comes to courses that he enjoys and kind of brings his game to that level. Is he too bothered with courses that don't, don't really suit him? I don't think he is anymore. So if I was going to set a line, I'd probably be over under seven and a half career major wins for Rory. So would you be in agreement there? Yeah, I was thinking about eight overall. You know, he's such a good ball striker, but he needs the courses to be set up perfectly for him these days, really. Um, you know, the, the other young lads on the tour are catching up with him almost in terms of distance, but he's still a prodigious hitter of the ball. So when, it, when the setup's perfect, then he will win again. It's just a matter of time, but yeah, about four more maybe. Well, on that point then, Michael Rhodes asks, out of the current young crop coming through, who did the panel think can challenge for world number one in the coming years? So I suppose he means people who have not yet reached number one status. So Joe, we'll come to you first. Well, it depends what we mean by reaching number one status. I mean, um, John Rahm would obviously be the main man and he's, he's so close already and he's only 23 years of age. He's got plenty in him and I suspect he'll win several majors over the years. But slightly more off the radar, one of Steve's favourites, Aaron Wise, he, he's a good young player to watch out for and um, Joaquin Neerman as well, who's um, already been found in the market whenever he starts the course, but you know, he's already um, churning out top 20s whenever he plays and he, he's only been on tour for a few months. so. He's definitely one to watch. And Ian, what about yourself? Any that Joe hasn't mentioned? Uh, I'd say the Shambles probably the obvious one in terms of the front end, of the market at the front end. Sorry, the world rankings now with uh, guys with potential to go to number one, and two more from kind of left field. I'd say Sung J M, a young Korean player, just coming off the web.com. He's won three times already in the web.com this season. He'll be on the PJ Tour next year. I think he's potential to be a world number one in the future. And Cameron Champ, we've mentioned before on previous co uh, podcast how good he is and how far he hits the ball. I think he's another one who could be potential number one in the future. Yeah, that's Greyhound Derby favourite Cameron Champ. <laughs> uh, just going back to the Ryder Cup team there, Andy Black asks, which Ryder Cup player will be the most shaky under pressure? Um, Ian, I'll start with you. So maybe one from Europe and one from the US now that we know who's going to be there. Which would yeah. you be most uh, concerned about? Generally, it's probably, you're looking at the rookies are probably the most shaky. Obviously, the ones with less experience, not playing in the Ryder Cup. I don't think it's going to be a massive cauldron as it was at Hazel Team two years ago in Paris. I think it'd be a lot more relaxed in that way. One I would say, I don't want to be harsh in any of them, one I would say that's a potential. I'm trying to think now. Maybe John Ram, just with the fiery attitude. He might get a little bit too hot under the collar and might kind of break down in the, in the singles or foursomes maybe. And one from the American side, who's obviously actually more experienced, would be Bubba Watson, just with his, his whole history with Paris and France. I think he's one who could potentially melt down as well. And Joe, yourself, any potential meltdowners? Uh, yeah, I, I agree fully with Watson. Um, He's not a fan of the course, so um, you know he could he could easily uh, melt melt down around there. 
Um, I, I assume part of Sergio's pick was that he'll be with John Rami, and do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd agree yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, it could, uh, it could bring him back to a bit more relaxed level. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, also, you know, Tyrrell Hatton, he's another hot head who yeah. he could rise to the challenge and be like a polter in this competition, or he could completely blow up and be terrible. We don't know. Yeah. Well, the final question comes from Lucas Cash Beast, but he's asking about Danny Willis' chances this week. So, Lucas, stick around. We'll get back to that later on. But coming up after the break, we're going to talk to BMW Championship. Success ain't earned, it's bought. That's why at Paddy Power, we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app. Download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Welcome back to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. We're looking at the BMW Championship at Aronimink Golf Club in Newton Square, Pennsylvania this weekend. Ian, could you just give us a quick show of betting before we get into the tipping? Sure. We're a very favourable seven places this week in the BMW with only the 70 players playing. We're always uh, very favourable, Ian. <laughs> that's true. 69 that's true. left now, Ian. Is that 69, correct? actually, you're right, Jay, with a, with a withdrawal. So, uh, Dustin Johnson heads are betting at 8-1. to one. Justin Thomas next in at 12-1. to one. Justin Rose, 12-1. to one. Brooks Kupka, 14-1. to one. Roy McIlroy, 14-1. to one. Bryson DeChambeau, 16-1. to one. And 18-1 to one bar. Now, Joe, we know this course. It's hosted the National uh, on a number of occasions. Back in 2011, Nick Watney set the course record there when winning. What do we know about the course? Has it changed much since then? Uh, yeah, it has changed since then. Um, Justin Rose also won in 2010, so a few people will fancy him this week. But, um, you know, they've overhauled it since. They've brought in uh, Gil Hans to uh, do, do a redesign. Um, he's widened the fairways. It, it was a typical American parkland course, but it's got thinner and thinner as the years have gone on. And um, he's come back in and he's restored the fairways to a lot closer to the original redesign, the original design even. Um, yeah, so it's a bit wider um, off the tee, but um, you know it's still going to be the same. I think this is a second shot course, really. You need guys that can play in, into the pin from the right angles and things like that. Um, yeah, the greens will be pretty slick as always, but um, yeah, very different to how it was seven years ago. And Joe, what's the headline tip? Who is going to win in Pennsylvania this weekend? Uh, for me, it's Jordan Spieth. Um, you know, he hasn't p played well all season. He'd readily admit that. But, um, you know, he is a class act when he gets it all together. And there are signs in recent weeks the putter is definitely getting back to what it was. You know, he's not ranking top of the tree for, for a strokes game with a putter yet. But, you know, he was second in the, PG the uh, US PGA for strokes gained. And he's put in a couple of solid, if not spectacular, weeks in the first two playoffs. Um, his ball striking, while not quite as it was, is still pretty good and this is the course where he'll be able to plod his way around um, and yeah I think he's got a great chance this week it's um, it's a Donald Ross design he also designed Sedgefield Spieth was um, where the Wyndham Championships hosted and Spieth was uh, second there in 2013 you know it, it strikes to me as a course where you've got to have a good golfing brain to get round even if you can bomb it off the tee now of the new fairways the widened fairways but um, yeah I think Spieth's got a great chance this week and Ian, you're obviously a Jordan Speed fanboy. Are you rolling in with Joe, or have you a different selection as your? I have a different did? selection. I do like Speed as well, but I have a different selection. It's uh, Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, final round 65 on Monday for a four-place finish at the Dell. I've been coming into decent form before this, with an 11th at the Wyndham Championship and a 15th at the Northern Trust. He ranked second in the field in putting at the Dell, and has ranked 20th in the strokes game putting for his last five tournaments. Arana Mink is a ball striking test, and Hideki's, Hideki's elite ball striking should see him uh, suited to the course. His good ball striking stats combined. With big improvements with his putter he's my idea the most likely winner this week so Jordan Speed for Joe Champion and Hideki Matsuyama for Ian McLaughlin Ian we'll stick with you then for a couple of other selections your next best and maybe one at a bigger price yeah I have two more uh, next best is Webb Simpson uh, obviously had a very poor weekend the Dell but weekend rounds of 76 and 74 like before that he was at minus 11 for two rounds in Boston and before that he put up very good performances 12th at the British Open 19th at the PGA Championship but second at the Wyndham Championship as Joe mentioned the Donald Ross design course as well ranks highly in almost all stats this season and the key stats for Ron Mink such as uh, strokes gain TD Green and par 4 scoring uh, played here in the AT&T National in 2010 and 2011 41st in 2010 8th in 2011 
Uh, I think he can go well. Return to form so you can quote 51 look more than fair. And one outsider is Kyle Stanley. Uh, 12th last week in Boston to follow up an excellent second place at the Bridgestone Invitational. Struck the ball so well last week and would have had a top five with a decent week on the greens. His current stats are very impressive. I'll list a few of them here. Fourth in strokes gain tee to green. Tenth in strokes gain approach. Seventh in greens of regulation. Fourth in proximity to the hole. Fourteenth in par, par four scoring. All of this indicates to me that he's in for a big week and looks very solid each way play around 66 to 1. 66 to 1, we like the sound of that. Uh, Joe, have you another se few selections for us? I've got a couple more. Um, I echo what Ian said about Hideki Matsuyama. I think it's all coming right for him now, and he's got some, you know, he's had a bad year with injury problems, but, it, um, you know, he's got some unfinished business this year, and it would not surprise me if he claims uh, a title either this week or next week. He's also um, performed well at the Wyndham a couple of weeks ago. So, um, yeah, like him, and I also like Emiliano Grio. We talked about ball striking and Grio. When he's playing well, he's one of the best out there, and um, you know he's he's been in excellent form last week. He finished seventh. He could arguably have finished a bit higher, but um, you know he, he's an excellent uh, ball striker, and he's excellent tee to green. He ranked uh, seventh last week in uh, strokes gained tee to green, so um, you know he's accurate. He should get a, quite a bit of joy around here if he brings his game. Good stuff. And before we take another break, any other bets either of you meant to mention, Joe? You happy um, with happy with your selections? Pretty happy, yeah. And Ian? I'm the same, happy enough with them. Okay, we'll be back in a minute with the Omega European Masters. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of ten pounds or more across any sport in a week, and you'll get a free ten pound bet then next week. TNC Supply 80 plus begumbleware.org. Welcome back to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. We're looking ahead to the Omega European Masters at Cron Sorcier. I hope I've said that right for all you pedantic golf fans out there. This tournament has gone to a playoff in four of the last five seasons and it was won last year by Matt Fitzpatrick who was also a runner-up to the aforementioned Danny Willett in 2015. Ian, could we get a full show of betting please from Paddy Power? Sure. Uh, seven places also this week for the Omega European Masters. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick heads are betting at 10-1. to 1. Thomas Peters next in the 20-1. to 1. Charles Swartzel 22-1. to 1. Matt Wallace 22-1. to 1. Lucas Bjerregaard 22-1. to 1. Lee West with 25-1 to 1 and 28-1 to 1 bar. Lovely stuff. And Joe, if you could once again tell us what to expect from this course. Obviously, it's a European Tour regular uh, golf course that they use. It's been on the go for many, many, many years. But if you could just remind the listeners what they can expect this weekend. Uh, yeah, it's a nice one for golf punters this because there's plenty of uh, form to go on. A beautiful course, Kransas, the air in the Swiss Alps. It's a short course. It's like 6,848 uh, yards. So um, shorter hitters are not disadvantaged by a lack of length. So you have to look at the role of honour here. You've talked about um, Matt Fitzpatrick, of course, um, Danny Willett, Alex Noren, um, Miguel Angel Jimenez, uh, Thomas Bjorn in his advancing years. You don't have to hit it a long way to contend here. And Ian, before we get uh, your headline selection, I just want to ask you, how do you think the players who haven't been selected for the Ryder Cup will approach this weekend. Are they going to go out, try and prove a point, or will they be down on themselves? I'm thinking about the likes of Thomas Peters, Matt Wallace, etc. How do you think they'll be if feeling? You, if I take each one, like we say, who's in contention, Fitzpatrick, Peters, Wallace, what are playing this week, obviously. I think Fitzpatrick and Wallace probably had to prove a point. I think Peters is one of those who could go a bit into himself and kind of just be a bit sullen all week. And he'd be one I'd be looking to oppose at the front end of the mark for that regard, especially. But I think Fitzpatrick and Wallace would be two who wanted to kind of stick it to Bjorn that way, saying this is what you could have picked, really. And kind of lay down a marker for the next That's time it. around. Exactly. So, moving on then, what is your headline selection then, Ian? Uh, top tip this week is Richie Ramsey. Uh, 12th last week, the maiden in Denmark signaled a return to form after a poor season. A course that is quite similar to Crown Sorcier, although albeit this one being at altitude. Uh, course form will be important. Ramsey's a very solid por pass portfolio. Winner here in 2012, 8 in 2014, 10th in 2015. A third round 75, scuppered his chances to challenge for a second title, but did finish with a final round 64. Crown Sorcier demands accurate tee shots and finding small greens. Ramsey was second in driving accuracy and seventh in greens regular last week I think he looks one of the best of the week around the 50 to 1 mark lovely so 50 to 1 for Ian's headline tip there Joe we mentioned your headline tip earlier in the show tell us who it is yeah I like Danny Willett this week um, you know we all know how uh, difficult it's been for Danny over the last couple of years since winning the Masters I think the um, the burden of um, being a major champion has weighed heavy around his neck over the last couple of years and it's affected his game but he's definitely on his way back and you know he he wasn't playing that well at the start of the year, but once he got back to uh, continental Europe, he's performed really well. You know, he um, was eighth in Italy, um, 
uh, 6th in Ireland, 19th in Scotland, 24th for the Open, 18th for the Czech Masters recently. He had a bit of a blip last week at the Maiden Denmark. He actually started well with a nice opening round, but um, uh, yeah, followed up with a poor one. But I'm willing to forgive him that because he's got such good course form at Grand Sessier. Um He's got uh, three top tens in the last three in the last six years, and um, he was also a champion in 2015. I think if he had not had such a poor couple of years, then you'd be getting a lot shorter prices about him. You know, we've obviously got to take the chance that he may not perform this week, but he's such a quality player when he gets it right, and I don't think he's far away from that now. So I'm willing to give him a chance this week. And are you disappointed we won't be seeing him and his brother at the Ryder Cup? Um, I think that's probably a good thing, don't you? Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Sure. Ian, what do you think? You disappointed absolutely we won't agree. see the Willets? Yeah, absolutely agree. The less of them, the better, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, then Danny Willett and Richie Ramsey, the two lads, headline tips for the Omega European Masters. Joe, who else is on your radar this weekend? Yeah, I'm uh, backing an improver this week, uh, Thomas Dietry. He's um, you know a young Belgian. He's he's good mates with Peters, but they uh, couldn't be you know they're pretty they're very uh, different game styles. You know, um, Peters hit it a long way, which is not what you need around here really. I can see him getting a bit hot, hot around the collar. Um, yeah, with uh, with regards to how he approaches this course, especially since he's missed out on that pick. Um, Dietrich, though, he's a, he's a greens in regulation machine, and um, you know he's he's uh, finds the fairways, and then he'll find the green. And here we've got tight greens at uh, Cranses, yeah. So finding the greens will be key. Um, yeah, he's uh, performed really well in the last few weeks. He's uh, Five top 20 finishes in the last, last seven starts, and his best finish of the season came last week at the Maiden Denmark. Ian's explained how they are similar courses. Um, yeah, he narrowly missed the cut in this event last year, but I'm willing to forgive that because it's his first uh, spin on the course. You'd expect him to come on for that run. And yeah, Green's in regulation machine, who should make a lot of, uh, a lot of birdies around here. Good stuff, and anyone else you want to mention before we throw back to Ian? Uh, yeah, one uh, veteran of the uh, European we Tour. Who, yep. This is about as a uh, veteran as he gets at this stage. Uh, Miguel Angel Jimenez. Um, Fabulous. Yeah, someone that every golf fan, I think, has a soft spot for. You know, he's playing sparingly on the European Tour now, but um, he's quite happy to pick up big checks on the Seniors Tour. He won the uh, Senior Open, was runner-up at the uh, Senior US Open. Yeah, he's got a fine Cran Cessier record. He's first played here in 1989. He's had 11 top 10 since then, and five, five of them came in six years from 2008 to 2013. He might be getting on a bit, but he's ranking really high in the stats when he does play this year. He's only played in four European Tour events, and not necessarily big ones. But um, yeah, he's, he's been an excellent touch when he has played. He's finished 7th, 19th, 14th and 12th this season. So he's an each-way option for punters. Lovely stuff. And uh, Ian, anyone to add to your portfolio this weekend? Yeah, if you if you like, uh, the next best, and I have three outsiders, I can yeah. go through them if you like. Uh, the next first next best is uh, Sam Horsfield. Uh, it's his first try at Crown Source the year, so might need a couple of goals around before winning. But a 10th place finish la uh, last week in Silkborg sparked my interest. Obviously, as we both mentioned, myself and Joe, another tree line course where accuracy is the key. I think he's a future star in the European Tour. I thought quotes of 661 plus were more than fair in an average field. First outsider, Bradley Dredge. Not having the greatest seasons on bare form but has only missed one cut since the end of May with Cran Sorcier being such an idiosyncratic track previous form is a good indicator of finding the winner Dredge is a win a second a third and a four place finish here in the past I felt he was worth an each way play at 125 to 1 second outsider is Kim Koivu a Finnish player is making big moves on the challenge tour this season won the Finnish challenge four weeks ago and then won the Rolex trophy event uh, 10 days ago an event also played in Switzerland <coughs> excuse me his first try at the course <coughs> excuse me his first ride the course but looks a star of the future I think he's worth a small play at 125 to 1 as well and the last outsider is David Lipsky not having the best season two decent performances in Germany most recently a 13th place finish in the, in the European Open another player with solid course form including a win in 2014 I think he's worth a small each way play at 125 to 1 as well lovely stuff Ian and then uh, just before we wrap up this week's show we'll just get a quick summary of the weekend tips Joe what were your three for the BMW? Uh, for the BMW, Jordan Spieth, Hideki Matsuyama and Emiliano Grio. And Ian, yours for the BMW were? Hideki Matsuyama, Webb Simpson and Kyle Stanley. And back in Europe, Joe? Uh, yeah, I realised I missed one off, so I'll, uh, I'll do that now. Um, Danny Willett, my uh, best bet, Thomas Dietrich and Miguel Angel Jimenez. And the one I've missed off is Aaron Rye. 
Um, another real straight hitter who should do well around here. Um, he's been churning out sort of top 30 finishes this season, sort of in the last couple of months. He's played really well. Fifth at the BMW International and ninth in Scotland as well. Ranks 20th in uh, greens hitting regulation this season on the European Tour. And this seems like a sort of course that is right up his street. So I expect Aaron Rye to go well. Lovely stuff. And Ian, who is carrying your money in Europe this weekend? Uh, top bet, Richie Ramsey. Next bet, Sam, next best, sorry, Sam Horsfield. Uh, outsiders then, Bradley Dredge, Kim Coyview and David Lipsky. And finally, lads, this is finally before we go now. The Ryder Cup, we have the teams, we have the wild cards. Joe, who wins the Ryder Cup? Europe. I think uh, Le Golf National is a track that you have, to be, get, you have to get used to and a lot of the European guys will have played there many times before. It's going to be a big disadvantage for the Americans not having played there. Some of them went over and uh, at the French Open earlier this year, but you know it's not an easy track to get used to. Ian, for you, who wins it? Europe. I think Europe win it, win it again, yeah, for sure. Lovely stuff. Go Team Europe. Go Team. <laughs> Bruce and Steve will be back next week looking ahead to the KLM Open and the rest of the latest golfing news. If you enjoy these shows, make sure you rate, review and subscribe on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes or any other platform you're listening to us on. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym.